Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If I can ask members of council to take their seats and members of the public to take their seats, we'll start the meeting in uh, one minute. On va commencer la réunion dans une minute. We'll be starting the meeting in a minute. for a moment of personal reflection and remain standing as we introduce our special guest who will sing our national anthem. And if you could remain standing, and we'll ask uh, our colleague, Councillor Eglai, to introduce our special guest who will sing the national anthem. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I'm very pleased to announce this morning that we have uh, Stephanie Fukumoto from Ward 9 to sing the uh, national anthem. Stephanie lives in Ottawa with her husband and two beautiful children. She has a bachelor's degree in vocal music education and has had the pleasure of instructing private vocal and piano lessons in the community of Trent Darlington for the past six years. You can also find her leading the worship music on Sunday mornings at the Arlington Woods Free Methodist Church. I'm very pleased to welcome Stephanie for the singing of O Canada. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. Car ton bras s'est porté les pays, il s'est porté la croix. Ton histoire est ton épopée, tes plus brillants exploits. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. What a beautiful rendition. Thank you very, very much. And thank you, Councillor Eglai, for suggesting our guest. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce and welcome to Council the uh, proud member, or winners rather, of the 2019 Mayor for a Day contest from Nepean High School, grade 11 student Chanel Robertson, and it's Collège Catholique Franco West, étudiant de la 12e année. And a 12th, 12th grade a student, uh, Philippe Doucet. Engagement Committee and the City of Ottawa promotes youth engagement in municipal politics and civic affairs. From February 1st to February 28th, high school students from grades 9 to 12 were invited to submit essays or videos about what they loved most about Ottawa and provide two ideas on how to improve the city. This year, over 100 high school students from the Ottawa region submitted essays or videos to OYAC with more than 200 ideas on how to improve Ottawa. J'étais très fier de voir tant... 
I was very proud to see so much uh, commitment uh, from young people in the, in the competition. Communication and expanding the education on and expanding education on recycling in Ottawa, youth engagement initiatives including a youth innovation program, increasing public awareness about Ottawa's green belt and unique green spaces. We've had a very busy uh, day so far. This morning we appeared uh, on live television on CTV Morning Live and then came back to City Hall for a meeting, tour my office and uh, now the council meeting. Uh, we'll also visit various departments around City Hall and tour the Shopify headquarters right across the street and go to the Innovation Centre at Bayview Yards. At this time, I'd like to congratulate uh, Chanel and Philippe on a job well done, and I look forward to joining them on what will be an exciting and rewarding day. And I'd also like to thank uh, Youth Ottawa's Youth Engagement Committee for their partnership and their great work in setting up this contest. So if Council could give a warm welcome to our two mayors. Welcome. Bienvenue. The City Builder Award is presented today to Sanjit and Raya Gupta in recognition of their volunteer work with the meal care program that Sanjit co-founded as a student at McGill University. And I'd like to ask uh, Sanjit and Raya to come forward along with uh, their city councillor uh, who is uh, at the last minute unfortunately is not able to be here. Uh, Scott Moffat has a medical uh, challenge he's dealing with so welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I want to extend a warm welcome to the family, friends and fellow volunteers who are here today and to the people who support meal care. This award recognizes people who have uh, demonstrated an extraordinary commitment to making our city a better place through volunteerism and exemplary action. Meal care is supported by groups of dedicated and enthusiastic volunteers who obtain surplus food supplies from establishments and ensure that it is delivered to shelters and soup kitchens in a timely manner. The program started about four years ago when Sanjit uh, identified two significant issues that could be resolved by bridging them together, food waste and food insecurity. The first meal care chapter was found at McGill University in Montreal and another chapter of the organization was set up right here in Ottawa. There are now three chapters on university campuses across Canada uh, with a basic mission to reduce food waste and provide food to people in need. Sanjit manages meal, meal, care, meal care national team and acts as a member of the new chapter, a mentor rather for the new chapter, uh, and uh, they both are uh, um, of many dedicated volunteers who obtain surplus food restaurants from restaurants, cafeterias and grocery stores and making sure the good food goes to a great cause. Since it started in 2016, Meal Care has distributed over 10,000 meals and has saved over $50,000 for partner homeless shelters. This is really a simple and yet extremely important concept and it's heart heart uh, heartening that volunteers are helping to reduce food waste by making sure it gets to families in need. We all need to think about what we can do for our community and our planet. And according to the UN Food and Agricultural Organization, 30% of food is wasted globally across the supply chain, contributing 8% of total global greenhouse gas emissions. Creative problems uh, solving is one of the elements of leadership. However, taking action to implement solutions is another where Sanjit and Ria have succeeded. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate and thank you both and all of your volunteers for your wonderful contributions to three different communities now. J'aimerais cesser cette occasion pour remercier tous les bénévoles. I'd like to thank uh, all the volunteers for the contribution to the community. To uh, acting mayors for the day to present you with the Mayor's City Builder Award. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, you want to present? Can I present the other one? There we go. Yeah, you did on the other side there, Phil, and we'll come in a little closer. Come up here, sir, the light. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Jim Watson, and I wanted to thank uh, our Chancellor, uh, Scott Moffat, unfortunately he couldn't be here, and I wanted to thank all the members and Chancellors here today. It's truly an honor to be receiving the Mayor City Builder Award. 
when uh, we created meal care, we never, we want to simply address these two global issues, food waste and food insecurity, but we never thought it would grow into like a nationwide organization. We are very happy with our progress so far, but we are also very excited to see what the future has for meal care. You know, maybe we could establish some partnerships as we grow with some of you chancellors and the members here um, in the near future. Uh, with that, I want to tell Ria to give a couple of thank yous. Uh, thank you so much for uh, allowing us to come here today. Um, I just want to say thank you to our executive and volunteers of Meal Care who have like worked countless hours for the couple of years to make this organization what it is today. Also, thank you to our food donors and our recipients like the Ottawa Mission, Operation Come Home, and the Barhaven Food Cupboard who have accepted our weekly donations. Also, like to thank our family who's here with us today. They've helped with all of our deliveries and have helped with anything we possibly would need in the past couple of years and it would not exist today without them. So I just like to say that um, it's been a great couple of years and we can confidently say that the best is yet to come. Thank you so much. Congratulations again, and uh, thank you for bringing members of your family here to celebrate your great success. Uh, roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Councillor Luloff? Si. Councillor Dudas? Present. Councillor Harder? Here. Councillor Suds? Here. Councillor El Shantiri? Present. Councillor Gower? Here. Councillor Cavanaugh? Present. Councillor Shirelli? Here. Councillor Eglai? Here. Councillor Deans? Here. Councillor Tierney? Present. Conseil Fleury? Ici. Councillor King? Here. Councillor McKenney? Present. Councillor Leeper? Ici. Councillor Brockington? Here. Councillor Menard? Here. Conseil Cloutier? Present. Conseil Blais? Here. Councillor Derues? Here. Councillor Moffat? Councillor Meehan? Here. Councillor Hubley? Here. Mayor Watson? You see? Have quorum, Monsieur le Maire. We have quorum, Mayor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, adoption of uh, minutes. Pour la réunion le 8 mai 2019. Carried. Declaration of interest, including those originally arising from prior meetings. Declaration de conflit d'intérêt. None. Communications as presented. Regrets. Councillor Moffat has sent regrets. Motion to introduce reports. Motion portant présentation de rapport. Conseiller McKenney, appuyé par Conseiller Sud, s'il vous plaît. That Finance and Economic Development Committee Report 4, Planning Committee Report 7, and the reports from the City Clerk and Solicitor's Office entitled Status Update, Council Inquiries and Motions for the period ending May 17, 2019, and Summary of Oral and Written Public Submissions for Items Subject to the Planning Act Explanation Requirements at the City Council Meeting of May 8th be received and considered. Motion carried. Uh, we'll now have an update on the flood situation, an emergency response and transition uh, with uh, our city manager and, uh, and uh, Anthony DeMonte as well. Uh, just to bring members up to date, uh, as you know, the province established this internal task force on flooding, and uh, we received notice, I think, Friday at uh, 6 p.m. that I was invited to that. Uh, we asked uh, that Councillor El Shantiri, because his ward was the harshest hit, uh, be included, and uh, we wrote to the minister this morning, and this uh, just a few moments ago, uh, they agreed to have Councillor El Shantiri on the uh, the task force as well, which I think is important because he. Uh, I know other members of council, like Councillor Cavanaugh and um, uh, Councillors um, uh, Blay, have also been involved. But uh, we're going to go uh, the two of us and. Uh, do our best to represent the city and uh, bring back information to all members of council because this is obviously just the beginning of the recovery and we want to make sure that uh, the members of the public have an opportunity to give their input uh, to ensure that um, uh, this uh, issue does not keep happening without some uh, longer term response uh, to infrastructure and to the possibility of of uh, the province purchasing properties uh, so that the residents who have been put under a lot of stress in Cumberland and Britannia and uh, as well as uh, West Carleton. So uh, we appreciate the province's quick response to uh, asking that we have another member of council sit on the 
the uh, task force and we'll hand it over to Mr. Kanalakis and then Mr. DeMonte. Merci, Monsieur le Maire, Membres du Conseil. Thank you very much. Council. Today I will provide you with a second update on the 2019 spring flood response as the city prepares to move into recovery. The flood waters are receding. Although peak water levels are behind us, there remains a long road ahead to recovery and our city remains in a state of emergency. All three incident command posts and the community support centre in Constance Bay remain open. The voluntary evacuation area remains in effect and 155 homes have self-evacuated. Residents will be notified when it is safe to return to their homes. We have conducted four information sessions in the affected areas and we are providing more time for flood affected property owners to pay their 2019 property taxes and help these residents rebuild by waiving building and development fees as directed by Council. For many, the hardest part is yet to come. I want residents to know that as we move into recovery, we are dedicating all the necessary resources and our efforts to ensure that they are supported in the many tasks that lay ahead. Pour plusieurs, le plus difficile reste. For several of you, the, the hardest uh, will, is still to come. I want residents to know that when we uh, move to recovery, we'll be making all resources available and we'll make sure that uh, residents are supported properly. We have looked back at the flood of 2017 and are applying the lessons learned this year. Nous avons appliqué les leçons tirées des inondations. So we're applying the lessons learned from 2017. Like sandbags and mobilize our emergency operations. That effort, coupled with the hard work of thousands of volunteers, saved many homes. Nous avons obtenu des ressources comme les sacs de sable dès le début. Grâce à cela, uh, we uh, were able to get uh, sandbags in place, and the work of volunteers helped us to save many homes. Recovery stage early, including up setting up task force, bringing staff from all city departments together to tackle specific challenges. We've enlisted the support of the community organizations such as the Canadian Red Cross, Team Rubicon Canada, Ottawa Volunteer Search and Rescue and the Salvation Army. The mayor declared a state of emergency when it became clear that the extent of the flooding would require many resources to assemble very quickly and that support from the Canadian Armed Forces was ultimately needed. We've improved our communications method, and this included enlisting the help of councillors in the flooded communities who are close to the people in the affected neighbourhoods. Those councillors were essential in getting information out quickly and efficiently and alerted City Hall to specific needs in the flooded areas. Delving deeper into recovery, the City has developed an integrated approach with our departments and external partners to create four distinct task forces. They are the human needs, volunteers, debris management and infrastructure. The Human Needs Task Force is com com comprised rather, of officials from Ottawa Public Health, Community and Social Services, Recreation, Cultural and Facility Services, Building Code Services, the Canadian Red Cross and the Salvation Army. This task force will provide information on how to access accommodation and assistance for basic needs. They will distribute information on how to access insurance, the disaster recovery program for Ontario and the Canadian Red Cross and Salvation Army services and restore utilities. The community support services in the three impacted areas will be open daily from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Residents can visit the centres to access psychosocial support, learn how the flooding may affect water and septic systems, and find out how to clean up after the flood. They may meet with a building inspector for guidance on building and demolition permits and book an appointment for property assessments, and find out more about financial assistance and insurance claims. The task force will continue to conduct wellness visits and provide points of contact for access to other city services as well. During these wellness visits, staff will be able um, will be verifying that uh, properties are livable and safe for residents, ensuring that their questions are answered and that they are referred to the appropriate services when needed. Lors de ces visites, nous verrons à ce que les During these visits, we'll make sure that uh, these uh, properties uh, are livable and uh, that questions are answered and that people are referred to, to the necessary services. These visits as an opportunity to share additional resources, including a Red Cross home cleaning kit, information on how to access community and social services and client service centers, fact sheets on well water testing, mold, and cleaning up after a flood, and a visit a list, rather, of frequently asked questions of building code services. 
The second task force is to manage volunteers. The city is ready to recall volunteers to help with the recovery phase. Like before, when all available when all available volunteers were needed to fill sandbags, the volunteer requirements during the recovery phase will ne be needed, will n need to be just as robust. More than ever, if you're a quali qualified volunteer, your help is needed. Come in here quelques semaines, lorsque nous... Like several weeks ago, when we needed uh, volunteers uh, to fill sandbags, uh, we will need uh, uh, volunteers uh, at uh, the recovery stage. So if you're qualified and a volunteer, we need you. We need your help. ...force is being coordinated by the city's Recreational, Cultural and Facilities Service Department in partnership with the Ottawa Volunteer Search and Rescue and other NGOs. Volunteers will remove flood-related debris and sandbags, and we are also working in partnership with the NGO Alliance of Ontario, which is coordinating its own team of volunteers to work inside and outside homes. They will remove damaged property, including furniture, appliances and infrastructure, such as flooring, drywall and insulation. The Debris Management Task Force will be dealing with the most immediate concerns of the residents in the flood affected areas. The city is able to provide extra service with debris management and we have a lot of experience from our 2017 on how best to manage this. La ville bonifera son service pour ramasser les débris. And so we will improve our debris removal service. So we learned a lot from the 2017 flood period. The concerns will be what to do with flood damage materials and household items, and then later the sandbags. The city has prepared a detailed debris management plan and will be activated once the water levels have receded and it is safe to access the flooded affected areas. La ville a préparé un plan détaillé. He has prepared a detailed plan for debris management. This plan will be implemented when water levels have gone down or when sect, uh, affected uh, sectors uh, have been made safe. Uh, rather, is infrastructure management. The city of Ottawa's property and infrastructure has been impacted. The city will assess, inspect roads, facilities, storm and sewer pipes, parks, pathways, bridges, trees and culvert within the flood zone areas to ensure that our infrastructure assets are both safe and functioning. It is a tribute to our water services staff that drinking water provided from our two filtration plants continue to remain safe throughout the flooding and staff mitigated the flood risks. We will monitor key areas of our infrastructure to ensure the water pur purification plants continue to provide high quality and safe drinking water. We know that people will be returning to homes that have been devastated. These are our friends and neighbors and they are emotionally and physically exhausted. We are also assessing the impact of the recovery efforts on our staff and our resources and other city businesses. Our initial assessment suggests that nearly 2,000 city employees have been involved in the response so far, many of those full time. As the establishment of the task force suggests, going into recovery is no less resource intensive. The need for debris management, building inspections and other services will remain and could ultimately delay other city business. As assessment of these impacts is currently underway by city departments. That said, city staff will do everything possible to support all residents through this difficult recovery. Thank you for your attention. Merci pour votre attention. Merci beaucoup. Thank you uh, very much. Um, as you know, in these presentations, we don't have questions and answers, but you can bring forward inquiries uh, at the appropriate time at the end of the meeting. So, thank you. Uh, first item is status update, council inquiries and motions for the period ending May 17th. Rapport de situation pour la période terminant le 17 May. Received. Uh, committee reports, FEDCO report number four, rapport numéro 4, Comité des finances et de développement économique. Item two, municipal accommodation tax update. Carried. Uh, item three, Montreal Road Community Improvement Plan. Uh, we have a technical amendment. Uh, is there a long discussion on this or should we hold this, Councillor Fleury, because it's your motion? Well, I'm just wondering if uh, maybe we'll just go through the consent agenda then if, uh, if you're, going to, you're going to probably want to have a uh, comment on that. Is it, uh, is, is it easy, Councillor Harder? Okay, well, why don't you, uh, if it's a technical amendment, that's fine. Yes, Mr. Mayor, whereas the Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, plans to st uh, stimulate urban renewal and 
vitality in Vanier along the traditional main street of Montreal Road, whereas in the background and legislative context section, there is the following paragraph. The Building Better Revitalized Neighborhoods BBRN initiative began in 2016 with studies in the Hetherington and Vanier South Overbrook communities focused on engaging key stakeholders to discover what is already working in each of the neighborhoods and to identify the priorities and opportunities for revitalization. In December 2017, Council approved the Vanier South Overbrook Neighborhood Revitalization Strategy, now branded Vision Vanier. Several different initiatives are under this umbrella to ensure projects move forward in a coordinated manner, in addition to the BBR and Vanier Revitalization Strategy, subject to Council's direction and funding. Vanier Cultural Revitalization, Vanier Public Art, Vanier Road Revitalization, and key elements of Vision Vanier is the proposed Montreal Road Community Improvement Plan. And whereas Vision Vanier is incorrectly described in this paragraph. Therefore, it be resol resolved that council approve that the above paragraph be replaced with the following. And I'll just add the section that was changed, Mr. Mayor, to not reread it again. The initiative focus on engaging key stakeholders to discover uh, what is already working in each neighborhoods and to identify that the priorities and opportunities for revitalization. In December 2017, Council approved the Vanier South Overbrook and Vanier North neighborhood revitalization strategies. The strategies are part of the Vision Vanier Initiative, which aims to provide a coordinated communication and engagement approach uh, to city projects for residents, businesses, community associations, and key stakeholders. Okay, so uh, this is a technical amendment to the report. Uh, on the amendment, Harry, on the report is amended. Yeah, Councillor Fleury. Can I just thank uh, uh, Chris Cope and Cindy Van Buskert uh, for their great work, and again, just uh, uh, kudos to the Vanny BI who submitted uh, to our economic development uh, team a few years ago. Great to see that uh, project come to life. Great, thank you. Carried. Uh, I should point out, uh, John Smith, this is his last uh, council meeting. Uh, John is uh, in the back over there. If you'd stand up for a minute, John. John has served the city for uh, a long time and probably best known for the hard work and heavy lifting he did with the Lansdowne uh, project. And uh, there was a send off for John on uh, Friday. Unfortunately, I was not able to attend, but I just wanted to publicly thank you, John, for your years of dedication and professionalism and service uh, to your city. And we wish you uh, the very best uh, in retirement. So thank you very much for being here. And John, John was telling me that he's uh, often still asked for, for, uh, to bring people on tours of Lansdowne, so it's quite a legacy you've left uh, for our city, John. Thank you. Uh, item number four is tentative collective agreement with uh, International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, Moving Picture Technicians, Artists, and Allied, uh, Allied Crafts, Local 4711, known as IATSE. Uh, in camera, reporting out date upon ratification of the agreement. Uh, is there any reason to go in camera? This fits within our fiscal framework. Uh, it's a union of, I believe, uh, seven people. Um, on the uh, report, carried. Sorry. Motion from Councillor which they got. Thanks. Um, sorry. So, Councillor uh, Dudas, I apologize. Oh, no worries. Um, I do have a motion to ratify this, so I'll just read the there be it resolved that City Council ratify the proposal for a one year renewal of the IATSE collective agreement and that the terms of the proposal be made public once ratified by the IATSE membership. Okay, on the motion, carried. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dudas, and that was uh, seconded by Councillor Luloff. Okay. Uh, planning Committee Report Number 7, Rapport Numero 7 du Comité de l'Urbanisme, Development Charges 2720 Richmond Road, Redevance uh, pour 2720 Chemin Richmond. Carried? Descent. Descent by Leeper, McKenney, and Fleury. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, item Number 6, Development Charges, Background Studies, and Bylaws. There are a number of motions, so we'll come back uh, to that. And yeah, it goes on for quite some time. I have, I think, six or seven motions. Uh, bulk consent agenda. Does anyone wish to remove anything from the bulk consent agenda this time? Uh, on the bulk consent agenda as presented, carried. Okay, so we'll go back now to. Uh, 
2019 development charges, background studies and bylaws. Uh, we have a series of motions, so I'll ask the members of council to table the motions. Uh, the first is uh, by Councillor Gower, seconded by Councillor Harder. This is in regards to recommendation 17 on Robert Grant Avenue. Whereas a letter has been received from the Fernbank Landowners Group requesting further discussions with respect to the possibility of a development charge background study being conducted for an area specific charge for Robert Grant Avenue and related works. Therefore, be it resolved that recommendation 17 be referred to the general manager, planning, infrastructure, and economic department for further review. Okay, I think we'll do these one at a time, uh, to keep them in order. Does anyone have any questions uh, to the mover? This is a technical amendment, basically, Councillor. Yeah. Councillor Leeper. Just uh, what does that do with respect to our, our timelines? Uh, if there's any, is this going to mean that that project isn't included in the development charges? Are your, are your folks cutting off their nose to spite their faces, they say? Mr. Mayor, the project Robert Grant Avenue is in the development charges study, but it's a phase three of the transportation projects. This study was to examine bringing it forward. It was not part of the adopted bylaw today. It has no effect on the bylaw today. It would be something we would do after the bylaw is adopted. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Est-ce qu'il y a des autres questions sur cette motion de count? Any other question on this uh, motion? Thank you. The next is a uh, motion by Councillor Menard, seconded by Councillor Tierney with respect to inside the Greenbelt Parks 175 former Oblates property. Councillor Menard, please. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so whereas there has been further consideration with respect to two parks, the Grand Allais and the Forecourt, to be constructed at the former Oblates property, and whereas the developer has agreed in its subdivision agreement with the city to provide 555000 towards park construction, and whereas in addition to the 555000 that the developer is agreeable to the lands being subject to the inside the Greenbelt Parks component of the development charge, therefore be it resolved that the current schedule R being the lands at 175 Main Street, be deleted from the draft development charges bylaw, including subsection 5, 7, such that these lands be subject to the parks component of the development charge. The Grand LA and Fort Car Parks be included as development charge projects in the background study in accordance with attachment 1 to this motion. The remaining schedule in the draft bylaw be renumbered accordingly. Okay, Councillor Blay, please. Thank you. Uh, why would these parks be separated and treated differently than any other subdivision? Are you going to speak up, Councillor? It's hard Why to would hear these you. two items be treated any differently than any typical subdivision park, which is an obligation of the builder? So, Mr. Mary, in the previous development charges bylaw discussions leading up to for this park and the parks at former CFB Rockcliffe, because the developer agreed to pay for the development of the parks, they were removed from the previous development charges uh, as we did. But the scope of the parks has increased beyond which the, of the original commitment from the developers. So because the city is liable for that component, the only cost recovery mechanism we have is through development charges. So therefore, we're adding the balance of those parks, that, de that delta between the original and the, and the new price in through development charges. Sure, and is this a proposal to be an area specific charge or a citywide park DC charge to pay for two parks that the builder should otherwise be obligated to, to build? Mr. Mayor, it's an it's a area specific inside the green belt only charge. It, it does not apply outside the green belt. But it's still broader than the area of construction. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Anything Mr. else, Councillor? No. Okay, est-ce qu'il y a des autres commentaires ou questions sur cette motion? Any other questions uh, or comments on Councillor uh, Menard's motion signed by Councillor Tierney? On the motion, carried. The next uh, motion is by Councillor Harder, seconded by Councillor Tierney, revision to inside the Greenbelt Parks Development Charge component. Councillor Harder, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So this is to do with uh, parks, as you said, and uh, there's two changes that were necessary, um, two revisions that were necessary. One was because um, a balance of about of $1.1 million in reserve funds for inside the Greenbelt parks had not been factored, uh, and so therefore that amount does reduce the amount of the charges, but also it has to do with post-period capacity. Um, and that post-period capacity is intended to reflect that infrastructure constructed in the later part of a period for which development charges are imposed may provide a benefit for growth that will occur beyond the development charge 
period. But in the instance of parks constructed inside the Greenbelt, the charge has been amended to reflect a 50% post-period capacity for parks scheduled to be constructed from 2025 to 2029. Get some explanation from staff as to what this means. So, Mr. Mayor, under the legislation, we're required to both deduct the amounts sitting in reserves already collected from a charge, and we did not do that in error. We made an error and did not do that when we calculated the charge before, so we're required by law to include this $1.1 million deduction. And again, as Councillor Harder had explained, we have to account for parks that are built later in these inside the Greenbelt parks later in the period will have some benefit beyond the period of the bylaw, so in a sense, the next bylaw should be paying more of those. So this is this is in accordance with the legislation. It makes us compliant with the legislation and reduces our risk of appeal. And just to clarify, what is the financial? We're, we're being told 1.1 million, but what's the actual full amount in the reserve account? They. Yeah, I'm just confirmed with Mr. Baker. That is 1.1 million is the amount in the account today, and that's what we would normally have to deduct uh, from it as we calculate the new charge. You can't charge again for money you've already collected. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, on Councillor Harder's motion, seconded by Councillor Tierney, <laughs> carried. Uh, the next is a motion by Conseil Fleury, uh, seconded by Councillor Leeper, re rooming houses, dwelling rooms. Councillor Fleury, please. Merci, Monsieur le Maire. Cette motion a été présentée. This motion was uh, tabled by my colleague at Planning Committee. I'll read it because I do think it's, uh, it's an important. Whereas it is appropriate that dwelling units be subject to the same development charges rate as a bachelor or one bedroom apartments, therefore, it be resolved that the draft development charge bylaw be amended such as that dwelling rooms subject to the provision 43 through 47 inclusive grandparenting of projects that with site plan approval, nursing homes, and similar development buildings which contain three or more residential units where each unit has a single entrance and contains between not less than two but no more than four bedrooms pay the rate established for an apartment with less than two bedrooms. So in, in simple terms, what this is is creating equality between dwelling units and rooming units. Uh, we have, for example, a development where uh, the city did not recoup what it should have been in development charges uh, in the ranges of $2 million because of that loophole. So we want to make sure that the collection is done equally and that we don't promote um, the intent of that, of that uh, amendment was specifically for retirement homes and is used otherwise now. It's used for uh, units that don't provide kitchens and, and washrooms and so on. So we're, we're just trying to equal, we don't, we're, create, we're trying to eliminate that anomaly. Uh, Councillor Harder, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just think it would be helpful if we had legal um, uh, speak to this because it's uh, quite complex. I think it would be important if they could speak briefly to it. Okay. Legal, Good morning, uh, Mr. Mayor. Comment on this motion. Um, with respect to this motion, um, the legal impact would be to uh, recategorize dwelling rooms uh, to equalize the charge imposed to that of a small apartment. Um, the staff is charged with uh, determining as part of the background study um, whether this is defensible. Um, our our um, consultant determined that the appropriate rate to apply to a dwelling room would be one person per dwelling room. Um, we currently don't have uh, expert support for a, the 1.3 uh, persons per dwelling room that this motion would propose to adopt. Um, so if we were to adopt this motion, we would have to, and if it was challenged um, on an appeal, we would have to seek uh, outside expert support for for that position, which we currently don't have. So just to uh, apologize, Councillor, so if this went to the board, uh, your opinion is we'd lose it, and we would have to, we couldn't have our own staff testify because they're opposed to this, is that correct? Uh, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Um, we have we have a concern that this would not be defensible if we were to go to the board. Councillor Harder, was the clarification you just made was what I was going to ask for that they be clear on what the staff position would be. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Hubley, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question to staff on this one is, uh, while uh, I support what Councillor Fleury is trying to do in his ward to uh, prevent these uh, bunkhouses, but uh, how does this impact single family homes in the burbs that have five and six bedrooms? Are they going to uh, get caught up in this? Mr. Mayor, uh, no, this is quite a different scenario. So what, with the loophole that we we agree with the councillor needs to be closed is that rooming houses and residence buildings in the downtown core were getting away with paying development charges at the rate of a nursing home, which they are absolutely not. So this bylaw proposes, the bylaw as before you proposes a new category called rooming units, which uh, is a lower number than the councillor would wish, but is still more than what people are charging today. And it has no impact on single family houses. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so, um, uh, Councillor, I believe you've already talked. Well, Mr. Mayor, just on the basis, could we get Mr. Willis to just explain? Because Mr. Willis and I have had a conversation with industry, and, and maybe that could, uh, could bring to bear some of the concerns brought by, uh, by legal services. All right, Mr. Willis, do you, <clears throat> do you agree or disagree with the legal opinion? Mr. Mayor, I can't dispute the legal opinion. We are at risk that under an appeal, we would uh, not necessarily be successful. However, we, this proposal was put before the development industry locally, and they did not object to it. So the question is who would be, who? this is a very small component of our overall development pattern in Ottawa, very, very small, one or two units every couple of years. So the question is who would appeal? We would back down. We would back down. Okay, so does anyone... Uh Wish to uh, call yeas and nays? Yeas and nays on uh, this motion. Councillor Shirelli. Yes. Councillor Luloff? No. Councillor El Shantiri? No. Councillor Menard? Yes. Councillor Harder? No. Councillor Hubley? Sorry, Mr. Mayor, we were. Uh Discussing we're on the, we're on the flurry leave? motion. So it's yeah, uh, yeah, I'll say no. Councillor Meehan. No. Councillor Eglai. Yes. Councillor Brockington. No. Councillor DeRuth. No. Councillor Moffat. Councillor Dudas. No. Councillor Cloutier. No. Councillor McKenney. Yes. Councillor Blais. No. Councillor Leeper? Yes. Councillor Suds? No. Councillor Gower? Yes. Councillor Deans? Yes. Councillor King? Yes. Conseil Fleury? Oui. Councillor Cavanaugh? Yes. Councillor Tierney? No. Mayor Watson? No. 10 yeas, 13 nays. So that uh, carries. Uh, next is um, Councillor Harder, uh, signed by Councillor Tierney, with respect to uh, meetings. Councillor Harder. Mr. Mayor, uh, this is just be resolved. Hey, <laughs> I apologize, it lost. <laughs> trying to give you some hope. Uh, okay, Councillor Harder, please. Second by Councillor Tierney. This is with regard to uh, no further public meeting. Be resolved that pursuant to the Development Charges Act, subsection 12.3, uh, Council determines that a further public meeting is not necessary. Motion carried. Uh, next is uh, Councillor Harder, signed by Councillor Tierney. Adoption of the study and bylaws as amended by Council. And that is exactly what it is. Therefore, be it resolved the recommendation one and two be amended to read that the development charge calculations contained within the development charges background study dated March 15, 2019 and the area specific background study for individual stormwater management ponds and drainage systems dated March 15, 2019 be adjusted based on the summary of adjustments contained in document one as amended by the recommendations and motions adopted by council. The development charges background study dated March 15, 2019 and the area specific background study for individual stormwater management ponds and drainage systems dated March 15, 2019. And the bylaw changes as set forth in document 7 as amended by the recommendations and motions adopted by Council. Okay, so uh, Councillor Harder, signed by Councillor Tierney, any questions or comments on the motion? Carried. On the report as amended? Carried. 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 Question to staff, Councillor Fleury, before the vote. So 
Just to clarify, so the motion was to equalize the dwelling to rooming units, but what are we, what are, are we, what we're voting on right now is the staff is proposing an increase, just not, not the matching of the dwelling rooming units? That, Mr. Mayor, the council is correct. Under the 2014 bylaw, rooming units didn't have a separate definition, so they paid the nursing home rate, which was about 0 0.8 uh, persons per unit. Staff recommended, based on how these units are being used, that it goes to 1.0. So that's a significant increase, 0 0.8 to 1.0, in terms of the rate they're paying. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the report is amended. Carried. Adopté. Merci. And the vote consent agenda. A uh, motion to uh, adopt uh, reports. Councillor McKenney, seconded by Councillor Sides, please. <clears throat> The Finance and Economic Development Committee Report 4, Planning Committee Report 7, and the reports from the City Clerk and Solicitor's Office entitled Status Update, Council Inquiries and Motions for the period ending May 17, 2019, and Summary of Oral and Written Public Submissions for Items Subject to the Planning Act, Ex Explanation Requirements at the City Council Meeting of May 8, 2019, be received and adopted as amended. On the motion, carried. Adopté. Merci. Uh, motions of which notice have been previously given. Motion dont avis a été donné entièrement. Councillor Eglai, seconded by Councillor Dudas, please. Councillor Eglai. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Dudas, for uh, seconding this motion. Uh, this has to do with uh, a piece of um, road work that we're going to be doing in my ward this summer uh, and a request that the road be put back the way it was, uh, was put in, in effect. Um, in terms of people's uh, driveways and interlock. I've reached out to staff. Staff has uh, confirmed for me that there's no additional cost in this as we already have interlock um, crews out there. We reuse the interlock that's already been taken off of the driveways. Um, and um, in terms of the street itself, there's never been a complaint from anybody about uh, any of the driveways, any of the front yards or anything else. Uh, I've confirmed that with bylaw as well. So uh, again, we're ripping up this road for quite some time and uh, people are simply asking that it be put back the way that it was and uh, I'd ask you to support me in this. Thank you. Okay, uh, questions, comments on the motion? Carried dissent by Councillor Fleury. Uh, the next motion uh, that has been given notice is by Councillor Menard, seconded by Councillor McKenney, please. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. I read this out uh, in the Chamber's last, uh, last Council meeting. Um, I do want to just speak briefly, uh, briefly to the motion. Um, uh, I've written to city councillors about the impact to the city of Ottawa uh, for this motion, and I think people understand there is an impact to us. But most of all, uh, this is about the families that live in our wards, uh, the ones that have been uh, working on this issue for months and months now and are looking for some hope uh, in our city. Uh, and we're able to help provide that today, though it's a small modicum, it's a small piece of support, it does help. The city of Toronto has also passed a similar motion, and other cities across Ontario have, have passed similar motions as well and so I'd urge you to support um, this motion here today uh, and uh, to write the uh, the uh, uh, province uh, the minister uh, and uh, indicate our support for this uh, which will have an effect on on our city I've also just spoken with um, not too long ago with awesome Ottawa uh, which works with city staff uh, on uh, some of our programming and they're they're already indicating there's been an effect since these changes have happened in the city uh, to our recreation program so um, this is having an effect now so I, I do hope that and urge uh, Councillor to support this important motion um, uh, and, uh, and ha happy to take any questions today. Thanks. Okay. Uh, uh, does anyone have any questions or comments on the motion? The motion carried. Okay. Uh, next is motions requiring suspension of the rules of procedures. Motion exigeant la suspension des règles de procédure. Uh, I have a motion seconded by Councillor Brockington with respect to the AMO Health Task Force, uh, and it's timely because obviously the issues uh, the health department are dealing with have to be dealt with uh, quickly. So on suspension, carried. I'll just read it uh, for you. Um, 
Whereas the province of Ontario is undertaking a provincial health modernization initiative involving significant changes to the structure and funding of public health units in Ontario, and whereas AMO a Health Task Force is a representative group of municipal elected officials and senior staff from across Ontario established for the purpose of informing uh, AMO's advocacy strategy and positions on health policy issues in Ontario, and whereas since its inception 2016 until 2018, the City of Ottawa had representation on this task force with former City Councillor Mark Taylor, um, uh, previously serving as chair of this task force, and whereas Councillor Riley Brockington will continue to serve as the City of Ottawa's representative to the AMO Board of Directors as AMO continues to respond to the breadth and, of changes uh, being proposed by the province of Ontario that impact municipalities. Whereas given the province's planned public health restructuring and funding changes and potential significant implications for Ottawa, it would be beneficial for both AMO and the City of Ottawa to have a dedicated voice at the table with significant insight into public health matters in this region. And whereas volunteers on the AMO task force require the support of their council in order to be considered uh, and the City of Ottawa would be expected to assume all costs of a member's participation on the task force. Whereas it is anticipated that there may be the opportunity for the City of Ottawa to have representation on other task forces, working groups, technical roundtables, or consultation groups established as part of the province of Ontario's ongoing changes to public health. Therefore, be it resolved that Councillor uh, the Council supports the participation of Ottawa Board of Health Chair Keith Eglai on the AMO Health Task Force and be it further resolved that Council designate Councillor Eglai as Council's representative on any health provincial task forces, working groups, technical round tables or municipal consultation groups that are established in relation to the province uh, provincial ongoing changes to public health. So uh, as you all know or those of you from um, last Council will remember Councillor Taylor was our rep. It was important to have a voice on the, the AMO health table and given the significant cuts that are coming down uh, from Queen's Park, I believe it's important that we have someone who has that uh, background and I thank Councillor Brockington because he obviously will be uh, working hand in hand with Councillor Eglai. So I uh, encourage members of Council to support our colleague uh, on this motion. Questions or comments? So on the motion, carried. Thank you, Councillor Eglai, for accepting more work. Uh, next is uh, Councillor Deans, uh, seconded by Councillor Brockington with respect to Seniors Month, and it's time sensitive, obviously, because it's just around the corner. So on suspension, carried. Councillor Deans, please. Thank you, and Mr. Mayor. Well, the short version is be it resolved that Ottawa City Council declared June 2019 to be Seniors Month in the City of Ottawa. Just like to say a few words about the motion and thank Councillor Brockington for offering to second the motion. It's not a secret that as age demographics in Canada shift, more and more of our population uh, will be made up of seniors. Seniors are one of the fastest growing population groups in Canada. In fact, by 2036, seniors will represent 24 4.5% of the national population. That's nearly one in four people in Canada will be a senior citizen. That shift in population will be highly visible for us at the municipal level. During my years as a councillor, I've made the needs of seniors one of my greatest priorities. For some, transitioning to an older adult lifestyle may mean financial instability, isolation, or mobility issues. That's why I'm an advocate for the seniors, not only in my community of Gloucester, Southgate, but for all seniors in Ottawa. We are making changes to the accessibility of city buildings and our road intersections. We're creating fitness programs geared towards seniors, and we're improving access to snow removal and dental health for low-income residents. Seniors are a priority in the city of Ottawa, and I'm very proud of that. I'd also like to acknowledge that many seniors who have been instrumental in building our city, many seniors devote hours each week volunteering for our communities through schools, community association events and charities. Many members of council take the time and make the effort to hold events recognizing seniors during the month of June. Let's all send the message to the seniors in Ottawa that they're important and valued. I am happy to once again move this motion. I hope you will all join me in declaring June 2019 as Seniors Month in the City of Ottawa. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments or questions? This could be a tight vote. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Carried? Oh, sorry, Councillor Kamana, was this on this item? 
Yes. Exactly. And you have the most seniors per capita. Yes, these, I just wanted to wards. point out I have the most seniors per capita of all the wards, so I appreciate very much this this motion. And I also want to point out as a liaison on uh, on women and gender equity that uh, since women um, outlive men, uh, we also have the highest number of women mm -hmm. um, in the seniors category, so it's something that we have to think about. And I think I think it's actually the second highest per capita in all of Canada, Victoria's number yes. one and uh, Ottawa West and Nepean's number yep. two. So thank you very much. On the motion, carried. Adopté. Merci. Uh, the next item that needs suspension of the rules is moved by Councillor Leeper, seconded by Councillor McKinney, uh, with respect to an event that is uh, time sensitive. Uh, on the rules of procedure being suspended, carried. Uh, Councillor Leeper, please. Seconded by Councillor McKinney. Thank you. Uh, looking to close a road. Uh, apartment 613 is... Uh, <laughs> Be good. <laughs> Apartment 613 is uh, celebrating its anniversary, uh, celebrating uh, arts and culture. I'm sure many of you have come across it. It's going to be a good party, uh, outdoor patio and food truck. Um, it's on Thursday, June 13th, skipping to the therefore be it resolved that council approve the road closure for Laurel Street. That's in front of... Um, uh, uh, Happy Goat from Breeze Hill Avenue North to 35 Laurel Street, which is a point 100 meters east of Breeze Hill Avenue North from 3 p.m. on Thursday, June 13th to 9 p.m. on Thursday, June 13th for the Apartment 613 event, providing it meets the requirements, conditions, and approval of Special Events Advisory Team. Uh, are there any questions or comments on Councillor Leeper's motion? On the motion, oh, sorry, Councillor Luloff, please. Part 1613 is an absolutely incredible organization, and I'm really glad that uh, you, you support them as the liaison for arts and culture and music. Uh, they provide incredible services to our local artists, and uh, I look forward to attending this event. Great, Which thank you. Great. Right. And then you can give them an invite to the Putin Fest in Orleans then. <laughs> or craft beer. Okay. <laughs> uh, on the motion, carried. Uh, Any other motion under the suspension? No. Notice the motion for consideration of subsequent meeting. I the motion for examen réunion subsequent. Councillor McKenney, signed by Councillor King, uh, with respect to a road closure for Globe Fair. Councillor McKenney, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, another uh, road closure, and you are all invited to Glow Fair. Uh, therefore, be it resolved that Council approve the road closure for Bank Street from Laurier Avenue to Gladstone Avenue and Gloucester Street from O'Connor Street to Bank Street. Uh, this road closure will take place on the third weekend of June from 1 p.m. on the Friday to 6 a.m. on the Sunday from 2019 to 2022 for the Glow Fair Music Light Art event, providing it meets the requirements, conditions, and approval of special events advisory team. Just to clarify, we're not closing the road for four years. I tried. Um, <laughs> I didn't get that. But uh, this is uh, a motion that will just allow them to close that weekend for four years in a row. Uh, any questions, comments on this? Sorry, sorry. It's a notice motion. So we'll deal with it in the next meeting. Apologies. Okay, um, next uh, notice of motion, Councillor McKenney, seconded by Councillor Menard, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to take the time to read this one in its entirety. It was uh, an emotional week, as, uh, as you all know, for uh, the cycling community and many others in our our community. So this uh, notice of motion deals with um, uh, safe uh, cycling and pedestrian uh, and uh, full street infrastructure in our city. Whereas a bicyclist was killed in the painted bike lane on Laurier Avenue outside City Hall on Thursday, May 16th, 2019. And whereas this fatality occurred nine days after a bicyclist was seriously injured on Parkdale Avenue. And whereas this most recent death occurred five months after a bicyclist, Jen Feng Wu, was killed on the Sir John A. McDonald Parkway. And whereas approximately two cyclists and nearly six pedestrians are killed each year on Ottawa streets and dozens more injured, many severely, and whereas there is ample evidence of the infrastructure interventions that municipalities can implement to reduce or eliminate road deaths and serious injury in the event of collisions, and whereas no road deaths or catastrophic injury are acceptable 
level, and whereas municipal, municipalities worldwide have adopted Vision Zero policies that set out that no road deaths are acceptable in those jurisdictions, with commitments to investigate road deaths that do occur and implement the measures necessary to prevent those, and whereas Vision Zero policies further set out that all road deaths are preventable, including cyclists, pedestrians, vehicle drivers, and vehicle passengers, whereas a Vision Zero policy and framework will set out measures to be taken in the design of city infrastructure, including but not limited to streets, roadways, bike lanes, cycle tracks, sidewalks, and paths, that prioritizes the safety of vulnerable road users, pedestrians, and bicyclists. These measures should include, but not be limited to the following. A, all arterial roads, arterial main streets, and main streets will be included in the city's official bike network, and that this will be reflected in the upcoming official plan and associated plans. All arterial roads, arterial main streets, and main streets, when constructed, reconstructed, or resurfaced, will include the construction of infrastructure for pedestrians and bicyclists that meet the highest standards of safety. All roads included in the city's official bike network when constructed, reconstructed, or resurfaced will include dedicated, segregated, protected bike lanes and intersections. All roads not covered in A, B, or C above when constructed, reconstructed, or resurfaced, dedicated, segregated, protected bike lanes and intersections will be considered. And where those are not included, traffic engineers will provide an evidence-based rationale. And E, that the speed limit on residential streets be set at 30 kilometers per hour. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Ottawa adopt the Vision Zero policy and framework to eliminate all traffic fatalities and severe injuries while increasing safety, health, equitable mobility for all, and, the, and be it further resolved that the staff recommendations for the City's Vision Zero policy and framework will be brought to Council no later than Q4 2019, and therefore be it further resolved that the following measures be implemented immediately. A, that all traffic lights be optimized for the safety of vulnerable road users, first, transit priority second, and tra traffic flow third. B, that the city eliminate all revert reds. C, that the city eliminate all beg buttons. D, that the city eliminate right on reds where bike lanes are present. E, that the city undertake to identify all floating bike lanes, such as is located across from City Hall where the bicyclist was killed, and devise a plan to convert those safe, segregated, protected bike lanes. F, that all painted bike lanes currently on arterials, arterial main streets, and main streets, or that are part of the city's current bike network have flex stakes installed within three weeks and that the city staff finalize plans to convert those to safe, segregated, prote protected bike lanes and intersections within one year. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Shirley, we're on uh, notice of motion. Uh, we have others before you, so we'll come back to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, when would the appropriate time be to uh, move a motion of referral to a committee? It would be uh, on this item in particular, yeah. it would be at the next council okay. meeting when it's before okay. us. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, next, uh, notice for motion at subsequent meeting. Uh, Councillor El Shantiri, I believe, has a motion. It's a notice of motion, Mr. Mayor, moved by myself, seconded by Council Kavanaugh. And I know, I think we all know, uh, we don't have to talk too much about the flood. We just heard an update from the, uh, from the general manager of emergency services. Mr. Mayor, there's quite a bit of uh, uh, many theories in the community and our resident, I believe they deserve uh, the answers of what's happening out there. So I'm, I'm asking, therefore, be it resolved that the city council, through the mayor, ask the federal and the provincial government to conduct a formal investigation or inquiry, whatever is suitable, and to the flooding event of 2017 and 2019 that affected communities along the Ottawa River, including the, the city of Ottawa. Uh, sorry, Councillor, is that is that a notice of motion? Well, I mean, I mean, we hear from the general manager, and I, I want to ask some questions to see when will be the right time to ask you. Yeah, well, if you if you table this today, we'll do it at the next meeting. Or if you like to waive the rules and and take that and maybe yeah, you can, can ask begin. for that. Would you like uh, waiving of the rules? Carried. Agreed on that. Carried. Okay. So, Councillor, if you like to introduce the motion. 
Again, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I know it's written quickly, but uh, okay. I'm sure our staff can correct it properly. Therefore, be it resolved, the city council, through the mayor, ask the federal and provincial government to conduct a formal investigation under the flooding event of 2017 and 2019 that affected communities along the Ottawa River, including the city of Ottawa. As you heard, Mr. Mayor, there's a petition, there's a many people and a lot of media members, they visit uh, above the Marawa uh, and, and they've seen the water up that area is below what's supposed to be this time of year and in our area is flooded. So we'd just like to find out a full investigation, what took place and what's taking place and, and bring us a, a full disclosure to what's happening so we can have a separate discussion with other level of government because some folks they're willing to, to, to sell if the government willing to buy. So, But we, we can't ask for any unless we have a full disclosure of what's taking place, Mr. Mayor. So I hope you can be the voice for us. Okay, thank you. Councillor Cavanaugh, please, on the motion. Yes, thank, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate this motion being put forward. I'm very pleased to, to second it. I, I think it's really important that it involves both the federal and provincial counterparts. Um, there's a lot of partnerships that go, go on when you're working along the waterfront because we have the uh, Rideau Valley Conservation Authority, we have the National Capital Commission, and these are all partners that have been very cooperative during this flood process that has happened. Um, but we need to find solutions for next steps, and so we need to work very closely with them. And I really appreciate the effort of uh, reaching out to them. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Cavanaugh. Councillor Brockington, please. Um, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, my concern is that the motion is not specific enough. And my suggestion or my concern is that, um, you know, a formal investigation of what? I mean, Councillor El Shantiri provided. Um, one example with respect to why water upriver was significantly lower than the impacted communities, and I certainly appreciate uh, that request, but it would almost be best if the three most impacted councillors, Councillors Blay, El Shantiri, and, and Kavanaugh, could put their heads together and really tease out what are some of the significant issues they've heard from their residents and communities that they need answers for. And similar to the motion we just had read to us, which was very detailed, here are all the issues that we're looking for come back. So I think this motion needs to be beefed up a bit more with specific examples, because if we send this off to the provincial and federal governments and we ask them to conduct a formal investigation, they're going to say, well, what exactly would you like us to investigate? And I think we need to provide them with some more information. So I'm suggesting let's take a pause. Let's defer this to the next city council meeting two weeks from now and have a motion before us that has a lot more meat in it that we can reflect on. So, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move that we um, refer this motion back to City Council, the next City Council meeting. They probably defer it to the next meeting. Right. Uh, maybe I can offer a suggestion that, that addresses your legitimate concerns and Councillor El Shantiri's desire uh, to move on this quickly. Obviously, Councillors Blay, Kavanaugh, and El Shantiri, and uh, certainly Councillor Leeper had uh, flooding issues in their communities, that uh, over the course of the next uh, week, if members of Council, not just those four, but others, want to add some specifics, uh, we can put that in the clerk is telling me in the drafting of the letter to add more specifics uh, at that time, if that's agreeable. And uh, we would share a draft with members of council before it goes out to make sure that we've captured the essence of what we want those levels of government to investigate. Does that sound reasonable? Yes. Sorry, Councillor El Shantiri. Mr. Mayor, I'm open to discussion. This came up because we heard from the general manager and we hear from our community they want some answer. I'm not suggesting to go to the provincial and the federal government with what's been written right on the front of you. I was hoping a direct, a, this council will give the mayor uh, or asking the mayor to initiate this with the other two level of government on behalf of the city of Ottawa resident. Now, I know there's a lot more detail, but I think our staff, Pierre Poirier, Tony DeMonte, and others, they need to contribute to that motion, to what we are hearing and what, what we'd like to find out. So I think we can still pass this motion, but I'm hoping 
before you send anything out to uh, other level of government, you have reach out to staff and make sure our staff are preparing what they need for us to do. Yeah, no, I, I'd be happy to include the staff That's in that circulation as well as members of council and then we put it all together, I'll prepare a draft okay. uh, through the clerk's office, send it to members of council for their consideration. Okay. Uh, we don't want to get into editing on the floor of council. I don't think that tends to be that uh, productive. So if people are in agreement with that, uh, Paul, uh, that approach, Councillor Meehan, on the motion. Thank you. Uh, I was just uh, asking uh, uh, Councillor El Shantiri, would it would it be su or would it suffice if we uh, um, narrowed it down to asking the Ontario Power Generator, like the OP? No. Okay. I was just. That's part of it, is it not, to have to, to allay people's anger about the role of the Ontario Power Generation in uh, you know, the water release from the dams? Is that part of this? Would that uh, specific question of uh, asking to investigate their role, would that, would that help? Yeah, my understanding is, Councillor, that it's much broader than that. Okay. That's one aspect where I know the public are quite frustrated because uh, they see the uh, reservoirs and so on at, at a certain level, and then the flooding taking place uh, downriver. So I think probably the best uh, advice I can offer uh, is uh, that we approve the motion and then that you give me that direction to uh, put a little bit more s specificity into the motion uh, in consultation specifically with the four affected councillors, but broadly with all members of council and the appropriate staff who could offer some technical advice on what else should be reviewed. Okay, so on the motion, Carried. Thank you. Our next notice of motion is by Councillor Leeper, seconded by Councillor McKenney, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this motion also deals with the tragic death of a cyclist on Laurier um, this week, or sorry, last week, uh, it, with respect to the uh, federal gas tax. A number of the whereas's are the same because it is much the same issue, but I'm going to read them anyways. Whereas a bicyclist was killed in the painted bike lane on Laurier Avenue outside City Hall on Thursday, May 16th, 2019. And whereas this fatality occurred nine days after a bicyclist was seriously injured on Parkdale Avenue, and whereas this most recent death occurred five Five months after bicyclist Jen Feng Wu was killed on the Sir John A. Macdonald Parkway, and whereas approximately two cyclists and nearly six pedestrians are killed each year on Ottawa streets and dozens more injured, many severely, and whereas there is ample evidence of the infrastructure interventions that municipalities can implement to reduce or eliminate road deaths and serious injury in the event of collisions, and whereas no road deaths or catastrophic injury are acceptable, and whereas dedicated segregated cycling infrastructure is critical to protect protecting the lives of cyclists, and whereas dedicated segregated cycling infrastructure is key to achieving the modal share targets asserted in the transportation master plan, and whereas the current design of much of Ottawa's cycling network provides insufficient segregation and is too often disconnected with unprotected gaps that diminish the utility of the entire network, and whereas the federal government has recently announced a one-time increase to municipality share of the gas tax that in Ottawa will result in an additional $57 million to be spent on infrastructure, and whereas staff have undertaken to review the city's cycling infrastructure to identify the improvements necessary to eliminate unsa unsafe cycling infrastructure, whereas council has recently referred the matter of the one-time federal gas tax infrastructure transfer to FEDCO, therefore be it resolved that council recommend to FEDCO placing the highest priority in its decision making that the one-time federal gas tax infrastructure transfer be held by the city as a reserve dedicated to cycling infrastructure improvements to accelerate projects identified in the transportation master plan and any projects identified by staff in the review now underway addressing unsafe cycling infrastructure. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other notices of motion? No. Uh, notice of intent, uh, avis d'intention, notice of intent from the Ottawa Community Housing Corporation to hold the annual general meeting of the shareholder at the council meeting scheduled for June 12th, 2019. And notice of intent from Marchés d'Ottawa Markets, Municipal Services Corporation, to hold its annual general meeting of the member during the city council meeting of June 12th, 2019. Motion to introduce bylaws. Motion important presentation de règlement. Conseiller McKenney, appuyé par Councillor McKenney. Seconded by Councillor Saad. And under motion to introduce bylaws, three readings be read and passed with the ex exception of the bylaws listed as CC on the agenda. Carried. 
Gary. Uh, confirmation by the règlement de ratification, Conseil McKenney et Sud, s'il vous plaît. That, that, the that the following bylaw be read and passed to confirm the proceedings of the council meeting of May 22, 2019. <coughs> On the motion, Gary. Gary. Uh, inquiries. We have three written inquiries. Uh, first one is from myself and Councillor Blay. On Thursday, May 16th, 2019, a cyclist was killed by a vehicle while riding along the Laurier Avenue bike lane based on the city's priority to plan, build and maintain safe cycling inf infrastructure. It's important to understand how this collision occurred and how the city can move forward to provide safer cycling facilities. As part of the is an inquiry response. Uh, can staff provide the following information for the Transportation Committee meeting of June 5th, 2019? A, an overview of existing cycling safety programs and initiatives undertaken by the city. B, an overview and timeline for the safety review traffic services will be undertaken for this section of the Laurier Corridor. C, an overview and timeline of the upcoming strategic road safety action plan and update and whether it will include cycling safety measures. Um, to prepare for uh, prepare a report for transportation committee no later than Q1 2020 uh, 20 that will review a high uh, a review of high volume intersections with heavy traffic and cycling interaction potential options for safety improvements and a roadmap for changes to existing and future cycling uh, facilities. The next is an uh, inquiry by Councillor King, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have an inquiry for the general manager of transportation services. An online reservation system for paratranspo has been a topic of constant cons conservation, uh, conservation f uh, throughout the city of Ottawa and within the disability community for several years. The city of Toronto has operated an online reservation si uh, service for accessible transit services for a decade. The telephone call-in reservation system as currently operated by paratranspo is not efficient with users often waiting hours to make a single reservation. Users would benefit greatly from the implementation of an online system, which is reportedly under development. However, timelines for the project are vague. Users are consequently seeking the following clarifications about the future implementation of, of an online reservation system. Uh, number one, we are aware that there is a report to be tabled to the Transportation Commission on the details of the online system in 2019. Are staff able to provide a timeline on when exactly this report will be tabled? Number two, what sort of details around the online system will be included in the report? Number Number three, will the report include an estimated date of implementation for the online system? Will the date of implementation be before the end of this council mandate in 2022? Another a uh, major concern of many paratranspo service users is that the implementation of online reservation services will lead uh, to the elimination of the call-in reservation system for those who are unable to use online services. So the final question, number four, is will there be measures in place to ensure that online services do not create a disadvantage for those who are not able to access them? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, inquiry, written inquiry by Councillor Blay, please. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this inquiry builds on the motion from Councillor El Shantiri and your direction and uh, your participation in the Provincial Task Force. In 2016, the International Joint Commission published Regulation Plan 2014 for Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River. Uh, to quote the fact sheet for the plan, on Lake Ontario and the Upper St. Lawrence levels, uh, excuse me, on the Upper St. Lawrence, St. Lawrence, Plan 2014 would result in higher autumn levels in two years out of three. These higher autumn water levels are exactly what has been described by residents in Cumberland Ward through the two seasons out of three of flooding. Can staff review the management plan and its implications on the Ottawa River and raise the issue and uh, questions about this plan with the Provincial Task Force on flooding and any other uh, investigation that might take place? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor McKenney and Suds, adjournment, please. That the proceedings of the City Council meeting of May 22nd, 2019 be adjourned. Carried. Adopté. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>